Is the Democratic Republic of Congo on a path to renewed violence? The opposition wants the results of the presidential vote annulled and it's planning protests. So can post-election chaos be averted in the African country? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Deri Nabugedo. Almost a week on from elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo, voters are waiting anxiously for the results. The presidential poll was marred by logistical problems and credibility concerns. The Electoral Commission says early results show President Felix Tshisekedi is in the lead. He's seeking a second term after winning the disputed 2018 election. But opposition candidates are complaining of irregularities and ballot fraud. And they want the vote annulled and are calling for protests this week. What happens if it's not? Is this a recipe for yet another cycle of violence and turmoil in the DRC? We'll discuss all this with our guests in a moment. But first, this report from Victoria Gatenby. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, all eyes are on the National Tallying Centre in Kinshasa. The Electoral Commission says early results favour incumbent Felix Chesakedi. Opposition leaders say the election is a sham and they'll reject the results. The head of the Catholic Church in the DRC criticised the organisers of the polls. More than half of Congolese are Catholic and the church plays a powerful role in a society that's been racked by poverty and conflict. We have just witnessed what might be called a truly gigantic planned disorder. The unbearable images that have circulated following this electoral process. Women stripped naked, humiliated, beaten and thrown to the ground. If it's for the sake of power, that power can never come at the expense of a human being. The DRC has a history of political instability. Chase Kedi's election victory in 2018 marked the first peaceful transfer of power in the DRC since it gained independence from Belgium more than 70 years ago. But even that was disputed. Chase Kedi promised change, yet many voters are frustrated by the high cost of living, inflation and rampant corruption. Some displaced people in the eastern region of North Kivu, where fighting has raged for years, didn't vote this time because election materials arrived late. And election observers have raised wider concerns about the vote. The issues that certainly that we will be making recommendations about and we have been making recommendations about is to increase transparency, to increase the openness. There were problems on election day, um, but the CINE has not uh, officially said for instance, how many polling stations opened late, how many polling stations didn't open on December 20th. There have been other disputed elections across Africa this year, including in Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Madagascar and Gabon, often resulting in violence and, in the case of the latter, a military coup. The DRC is rich in mineral resources and arable land, but it also has poor infrastructure and badly managed towns and cities. Disputed election results compound such problems. Some in the DRC fear the country could spiral into violence again. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. We'll now bring in our guest. Joining us from Kinshasa is Patrick Muyaya, who's the spokesperson for the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo. In the Cameroonian capital, Yoande, is Marie-Roger Bilua, who's an African affairs analyst and editor of Africa International Media Group. And from Arusha in Tanzania, we're joined by Jason Stearns, who's the founder of and strategic advisor to the Congo Research Group at New York University. Thank you for your time with us on Inside Story. Mr. Muyaya, I'll start with you. Um, opposition candidates have been denouncing the chaos as a result of this election being held and irregularities that took place on the first day of that vote. What's your reaction to that? Uh, f firstly, uh, we know opposition been, we were preparing uh, protestations than elections. We've been saying it uh, previously in the, in, the, in the past days. What we have seen on elections day is first to see the way Congolese people were mobilized. There were massive crowds in the front of polling stations. Of course, there were some difficulties uh, about the, 
the, the, the, the, the starting time of voting and other difficulty we have seen across the country. And I remember we as government on the elections day, we made a statement asking electoral commission to tackle those issues and to provide answer. So we cannot say that there was chaos, especially when you saw those massive people, Congolese people want to vote, just because there was two or two, there was some incident and incident uh, which was managed later by the Seni who provide solutions. What we have to see here is that this election was inclusive because every candidate was able to run and Congolese people were, asked, were present uh, on the election day to vote. There was, of course, some challenges with the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission was providing answer. So I won't say... But what about, like let me them, ask you like this, did you get an answer to these... There, there was a, a report, Mr. Mouye... Uh, sir, let me just jump in. There was one report that was saying that while uh, the vote was officially extended until Thursday, ballots were still being cast on Saturday in remote areas. Can you confirm this? And, and how do you explain that? You, you know, they, 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 they meant, yes, I can, I can, I can confirm that uh, votes went uh, in some, some other constituency. People were able to vote until yesterday and I think today too. You know what we have to understand here is that we cannot refuse to get to to give the Congolese people opportunity to vote. Of course, uh, the, the, the the things should be done on December 20, but because of those mobilization, before, because of logistical problem, vote in certain area were delayed. And today, the main things here is that Congolese people are able to vote, to cast their vote, to choose their coming leaders, which is very crucial for our democracy. Okay, let's bring in Jason Stearns. Do you agree with that, that the most important thing here, Jason, is that people were able to cast their ballots? Well, it's certainly extremely important that they could cast their ballots. I think that the question here is that why the elections weren't just po simply postponed uh, to allow for more time for preparations to be made. In many, many voting stations, uh, not all of the equipment was there. Uh, there was massive failing of the electronic voting machines. Um, the the uh, procès verbal, which is the signed signed piece of paper that every voting station has to provide to document the uh, results, they often didn't have this piece of paper, and so I think in many of the cases these problems could have been solved simply by postponing by one week or so, which is what they'd done in 2018 actually. So um, so yes, I, I think every Congolese should absolutely have the right to vote, but I think also that more needed to be done. There were, there were indeed massive, massive irregularities across the board, as there have been in past elections. And I think that, that certainly is a shame. Uh, Marie Roger, please weigh in on this uh, debate. And, and look, this has been described as a high stakes election. What's at stake here? Absolutely, high stake election. There are several elections happening at the same time. You have people are electing the president, electing uh, members of parliament, electing in the province, province uh, leaders, or how you call them, there they are. So there were like tens of thousands of people campaigning throughout the country. So that was a huge thing. But what I want to say here is that uh, election is a, or, or a high stake usually because because um, those who are organizing them, not only in DRC. Uh, in many countries in Africa, they are not prepared to lose them. And they do everything they can, um, even illegal things, uh, unregular things, to get the result they want. So first, um, Mr. Kadima, the head of the Electoral Commission, has his uh, designation, his appointment has been very contentious. Uh, many, many organizations, including the main religious uh, groupings like the Catholic Church, which is very influential in, in uh, DRC, and the, the Protestant uh, um, grouping also association, they opposed it. And it took weeks and weeks before uh, the government and the president uh, decided to impose that man and why were people opposing his uh, appointment? Because he was considered too close uh, to the president, to the incumbent president, to be a neutral and a, and, and a honest broker. So this took a lot of time, and he was confirmed in 2021. So two years later, 
were the uh, scheduled this election. We saw that many things were not starting on time. And when you look at it, it's like the DRC authorities are not aware of what they have to, what is at stake here. They have a huge country, 2.3 million square kilometers. That's right. the second largest country in, in Africa. And the, the transportation is, I won't say impossible, but it's so difficult. This, the roads, you, you can only fly, and there are no planes. There are not so many uh, airports. And all this is a huge challenge. And they did not seem to realize okay. that there had to be more things about it. And okay, the second last thing point. I want to say. Yeah, go not, ahead. And, and one a, a num important challenge was also that they are facing uh, an enemy at the border, at the eastern border, uh, uh, which is the M23 rebellion, you know, armed group militia, uh, backed by Rwanda, according to the United Nations, according to many countries, the United States, and et cetera. We know that. And what we saw was that a truce had been uh, obtained. Okay, truce. look, let me just jump in uh, there. I mean, because you, you raise important points, and these are certainly challenges the country is facing, which I'd like to get onto. But allow me to bring in Mr. Muyaya to just address the claims that you made on uh, the uh, on Mr. Dennis Kadima, who's the president of the uh, National Electoral Commission, being too close to the government. Can you comment on that first? I think Catholic and Protestant were not happy because when inside the churches they organized vote, their candidate wasn't elected. Six of those different churches chose Mr. Kadima. It wasn't uh, a question about Mr. Kadima being close to the president Chisekedi or not. It was about being uh, able to be the head of commission or not. And since day one, Catholic Church and Protestants started strong opposition against Mr. Kadima, which became a bit more personal about him. But today, uh, two years later, we need to judge about what have been done as job at the Electoral Commission, uh, and not going to, to speak that Mr. Kadima was close to Mr. Chiseke. It wasn't very, it wasn't an objective, a no, it wasn't uh, objective, an, arg an objective argument. Now, what we have to focus on is to see what he has done his job. And we know we've been the first as government to recognize that there were some challenges. But listen, here you have 44 million voters. You have 100,000 different candidates. You have all those Congolese people who want to vote on the election days. So there was, of course, some incident. But if you have to compare the number of the incidents and the big number, because it's about making voting people in 75,000 polling stations, it means that if you have incidents in 100 polling stations, of course, it's something, but it represents something very, very, very little thing if you have to consider the presidential run, okay. for instance, to give you an example. So today, uh, I think the main things we have to see here is that Congolese people were able to vote, is that for the first time, as the new electoral law said, that CENI has to publish results by polling station. It's what electoral commission start doing in the past days. So okay. I think there is a way we can see what was good what was good and judge the process not only on those bad things happen, those things, even Electoral Commission was working on that, than saying that election was a massive cow, etc. Okay, it let me bring in Jason all Stearns. Those these people we've been able to vote in that day. Let me bring in Jason, because Jason, look, one opposition candidate who is a presidential candidate has said, has alleged that the electoral fraud of the century was taking place. And now we know that there are calls for protests to take place on Wednesday over what some people believe are disputed uh, election results. With Chesekedi uh, right now, with partial results being counted, he's uh, at around 80%. Do you think that there's a wider political crisis that's going to develop here in the DRC if the result is not accepted and the country risks uh, descending into violence in a national crisis? I think it's difficult to say. I mean, we're, we're about 30% through counting the results at the moment. Um, as we've said before, there are widespread irregularities, there were delays, voting stations did not open, there was violence in voting stations. The longer historical perspective here is that this is the fourth election to take place since the peace process. There's 2006, 2011, 
2018 and then now. And, and with the exception of 2006, every single one of those votes have been deeply flawed. In 2011, uh, the Let Catholic Church, the Carter Center, said that the elections do not reflect the will of the people. In 2018, most of independent observers said that Chisikedi actually wasn't the winner of the presidential election, it was somebody else. And now, once again, we're back at a similar place. And so I think that the political crisis that's here is probably not going to be one where there could be a military coup, as there have been in other places, or even one where there's widespread mobilization and violence in the streets. I, I think that's probably unlikely. I think the, the biggest crisis here is the crisis of democracy. These, this exercise took a billion dollars in an extremely poor country, cost a billion dollars. This is, I think people will see, why should I go and vote anymore? If uh, I'll walk for hours to get to a polling station and then I might not be able to vote or then somebody else wins other than the person who really actually won at the polling at the polls. I think that's probably the wider crisis that we need to uh, point out here. And the final thing I would say is that if you look at all the problems that my colleagues have mentioned in terms of corruption and, and especially in terms of insecurity in the East, seven million people displaced in the Eastern Congo today. Uh, these are problems, largely speaking, of governance and of accountability. And the best way you can hold the government accountable is through elections. And so if that mechanism is not working, then there's a serious problem. OK, Marie Roger, on the issue of uh, democracy, to what extent do you think what's happening right now in the DRC hinders the country's progress towards sort of a more democratic future and more economic stability? You know, I could not agree more with what has just been said. You know, what we could see on those polling days, election days, is the thirst for democracy, for participation. People in DRC want to be part of their national history, national decision making. We see that so much. They came very early. They did this and that. They waited. They they were very patient, despite all this. But the problem is that after spending so much money, you know, but before saying that, but the problem in Africa right now, as we could see in many countries like Mali and Niger and, and uh, uh, um, Guinea, for instance, where you have military coups and people dancing and chanting in the street to, uh, to praise the, the putschists. You know, there is a very important survey from the UNDP, which I recommend soldiers and citizens, where you see that despite all that, despite the, the sort of joy they have to get rid of, of, of the incumbent powers, Africans, 90% of Africans want a civilian government, but an accountable one and one which is really elected and a system which works. They are not against democracy. They are against this uh, mock this mockery of democracy, that's what is at stake here. And what we see here in, in DRC, where um, so much money has been spent and where you see all this happening, okay, I don't need to, to uh, repeat what has been said in terms of dysfunction, dysfunctioning. At the end of the day, the process will not create consent. It will create dissent after billions and so much time and so much, much so, so much effort. And that's the problem. And uh, really, of course, we speak of violence, but this, this country is already in, in, in a violent uh, context with the Eastern Congo people displaced, with uh, M23 of Rwanda attacking, and uh, but they don't seem to be really aware that's my main point they don't seem to be aware of what is at stake here you know the people say we are uh, you you look at uh, a european country at the us all of them are preparing for the uh, uh, transition the um, environmental the energy transition they say uh, the electric car what will be very important in the coming decades so they are preparing to secure uh, uh, raw materials, and then all of them look at uh, at the DRC, where they, uh, they they have like seven. Of course, because the Congo. Of, yeah, uh, you're talk, you're uh, referring to the Congo uh, Basin, they, they which of course is very important to to international countries. Even, 
yeah. that don't even organize a proper election. And the okay, let me bring in Mr. Pat Mr. Patrick Muyaya. Just um, look, I mean, you, you've said that the most important thing here is that people were actually able to vote. But we know from the United Nations that because of the violence in the country and what's happening in the East with the M23 rebel group, there's a record number of people who've been displaced, almost 7 million. The figure is 6.9 million who've been displaced. Many were actually unable to register to vote or go back home to vote. So um, how, how does that impact the election? And do you fear that democracy here is at stake? You say, I, well, I would like to make two quick comments before answering to your question on what Jason Stern was saying here. I would like him to explain, to say that they know, as uh, they did a poll, where the president was the favorite. And here uh, we are, of course, optimists. We are waiting to see the president will be the winner because Congolese people massively voted for him, especially Congolese people from the East, because we've been there. You are raising the questions about international displaced people. You know, people came to start to, to was trying to convince the president in the past month if we could postpone the elections to make sure we solve the issue with M23 before getting back to the elections. But here, the president and the government and say no, because we want to, demo, to consolidate our democracy. And we think that we should uh, make sure we did our election on time so we can make sure our democracy is getting stronger. The but Mr. Muyaya, what record is Chesekedi? Uh, what, what, what's his the, record here? What's his record here for Mr. Chesekedi? I mean, he's overseen the largest displacement the, the, of people the, 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 the in a country record, and, is the, also, the record, and also he's lost control of, of the no, east the, of the country. No, please, please. Let, let, me, let me give you an answer. Let me give you an answer. The drama in the eastern part of the DRC started after the Rwandan genocide. Eight million, more than eight million died there. We have the biggest uh, United Nations uh, mission in the world, in DRC, for 20 years. Nothing goes happen. And today, with the President Chisekedi, we are working we are working to reform our military system and etc. You heard the President Chisekedi saying that we are even ready to make war with Rwanda to stop those things because international community is not is not acting effectively to solve the issue. You know, international community, when it comes to the ERC, they are speaking every day about strengthened democracy, about human rights. We all know that Kagame and Rwanda are not able to deliver even a small, a small, small quality of democracy and human rights. But we are committed to organize those elections. It costs more than one million. But we did that because we think that democracy is a key where we can uh, see to, to provide sustainable solutions for people, especially in the East. And many of the people in the eastern part of the DRC choose to vote for the President Chisekedi with a clear strategy to finish the war in the East. But it requires time. You've been raising the issue of uh, uh, raw materials and all those strategic minerals. We have a clear strategy here inside the country. We are working on, but we cannot make big progress when those M23 are killing people in Virunga Park, are destroying ecosystem without having more condemnation, massive condemnation for international community. Okay, it's not it's a, it's unfair for Congolese people. That's why let me jump in there for the sake of time. Becoming president, we will by ourselves try to let work just... and uh, try to work to find a sustainable solution. Jason, on Jason, this. please respond to what we've heard and and how do you think the international community community is going to be looking at this election? Well, there's uh, several things that uh, the minister, Patrick Muyaya, said that are, that are correct. We did, in fact, do a poll ahead of the elections, just released a few days before the election, that suggested that uh, President Chisikedi, the incumbent, is by far the favored uh, favorite in the election. Um, and, but the question here is not whether he won the elections or not. I, act, I do think that he probably would have won the elections in a free, a fair and transparent vote. The question is about the process about the credibility and the legitimacy of the process. Even if he won, although the numbers that are being given are, are far higher than the numbers that were in our poll or even other polls that were conducted before the election, the question is about really do the voters really believe in the credibility of the process? And it's not just the presidency at stake here. It's the National Assembly, it's the provincial assemblies, and those are at least as important as the presidency. So just to respond to that. With regards to the East, again, the minister is absolutely correct. The war was prompted uh, by neighboring countries, especially the Rwandan governments who is not only backing them, 23 rebels, whose troops, whose special forces are on Congolese soil and have been engaged and have been pushing the displacement of hundreds of thousands of people 
in the Eastern Congo. So absolutely, there is a huge burden of responsibility on the Rwandan government and there by proxy also the Rwandan supporters because Rwanda is still a dramatic uh, recipient of international aid and especially the British government as well as the French government uh, have been very reluctant to criticize the Rwandan government because they have other interests uh, with regards to, to Rwanda. So absolutely, both Rwanda and members of the international community are complicit in this displacement in the Eastern Congo. But right. th that doesn't absolve the Congolese government from responsibility. It, it has also failed to stabilize uh, the Eastern Congo. It's not just the M23. There are 100 other armed groups in the Eastern Congo. And so I think they also bear a large responsibility in that as well. Okay, Marie Roger, uh, please Jason, comment. I'll so, give you... So, oh, sorry to interrupt you, but... Very briefly, Jason, Mr. Moyaya. <laughs> Very briefly, we're running out of time. No, sorry to interrupt Jason, but Jason knows that if we have to provide solutions, solution requires time. We won't be able to solve this issue in two years because the issue, we have that for 25 years today. So we should make sustainable solutions and it requires time. We cannot find the solution why you have Rwandan troops starting, continue to operate inside the ERC, making more drama, killing more, more people, okay. doing those massacres without having any I'll have to give the final word to, to uh, Ms. Marie Roger. Final word to you. Uh, just comment on what we've heard. And also, uh, uh, look, I mean, the, the country has a history of election-related violence. Tell us why. Put it in context. Oh, yes, uh, sure. Uh, j just because of the process, of obviously, where people are, uh, are not believing that uh, it's free and fair. And uh, of course, you also have, uh, as Mr. Muyaya, no, as Mr. Uh, Jason Stearns. Mr. Jason said, you have Rwanda being very active in destabilizing Congo. Uh, now they are speci sending special forces on the ground and etc. And to me, the one of the problems is not only the international community. Not, to me, is the leadership of DRC not really uh, taking in charge their des their destiny and and opposing uh, more. Uh, decisive needs, more organization, more seriousness against what is happening, what, what, against the plans of Rwanda, against them. Okay, well, on that note, I will have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time with us on Inside Story. Patrick Muyaya, thank you. Marie Roger Bolloway, thank you. And Jason Stearns, thank you as well. Thanks for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, you can go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Join the conversation on X. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From myself and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.